Hi, I'm Susan Rutledge, and in this video, I'll show you how to make this interlocking medallion design using the Shape Builder tool to make an over under effect in Adobe Illustrator. I'm going to move to a new document so we can get started. The first thing I'll do is get the rectangle tool, keyboard shortcut M, and click on the artboard to open the rectangle dialog box. I'll type in 8 inches for the width, tab down and type in 2 inches for the height, and then I'll say OK. Next, I'll get the Direct Selection tool, keyboard shortcut A, and select the top left anchor. Then I'll hold down the Shift key so I can also select the top right anchor. I'm going to grab hold of a corner widget and drag to the center until I see these little red lines indicating that I've rounded the corners as much as I'm allowed. So I'll release my mouse and move over to the Properties panel. Click on the Color Fill icon to remove the white color fill. And then I'm going to change the stroke value to 35 points and press the Return key. Once that's done, I'll move up to Object down to path and I'm going to click on outline stroke and that's going to allow me to create a fill color here besides black. So I'll go back to the properties panel, click on the color fill icon and I'm going to apply this green CMYK color 50 0 100 0. And then I want to change the stroke. Let's make this black and I'm going to increase this to four points. Now since I've increased the stroke, I've also increased the size of my object and I want to get it back to as close to 8 by 2 as I can. So I'll come over to the properties panel in the transform area and click on this ellipsis. Now, I don't have the link checked so I can make a change to the width and it won't make a change to the height. So I'm going to select the width and type in 8 inches and then I'll select the height and type in 2 inches and press the return key. Now I want to make a reflection of this object so I'll get the reflect tool keyboard shortcut O and I'll hold down the option key and click in the center of the bottom of the object and that's going to open the reflect dialog box. Now I do want a horizontal reflection but I want to keep the original and make a copy so I'll press copy. Now I want to separate these two objects and the distance of the separation needs to be the same measurement as this little opening inside the object itself. So I'm going to get the line segment tool, keyboard shortcut backslash, and I'm going to click on the upper part of the opening and then hold the shift key down. So I drag a perfectly straight line and drag to the lower part of the opening. And the measurement I see in the little text box next to my cursor is 1.19 inches. And I need to remember that value. Now I'm going to delete the line and then I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V, and select this bottom copy. And then I'm going to come up to Object, Transform, Move. And I don't want a horizontal move, but I want the vertical movement to be 1.19. That's the number I said to remember. And then I'll say OK. So now the distance between my objects is the same as the measurement here in the opening of my two objects. Now I'll select both of the objects and I'm going to make a copy of them and rotate the copy at the same time. So I'll get the Rotate tool, Keyboard Shortcut R. Then I'll hold down the Option key to make a copy as I start dragging. And I'm also going to hold down the Shift key because that's going to cause my dragging to snap at 45 degree increments. And when I get to 90 degrees, I'm going to release my mouse and then change the color of the vertical lines. So I'll come over to the Properties panel, click on the Color Fill icon, and it doesn't really matter the color because we're going to change it later. So I'm going to select this orange and then click on the Artboard to close the Swatches panel. Now I'm going to select all of the objects and we're going to get the Shape Builder tool, keyboard shortcut Shift M. Now sometimes this takes a little practice, but once you master the over under effect, you can actually do this with objects of any shape or any size. The only thing to remember is you need to start out with an even number of objects so that it balances out as you go through all of the over under effects. So we're going to start with the top right orange segment and I'm just going to click down with my mouse, drag around and I'm going to go over the green and then release my mouse. Next, I'm going to come to the green and go over the orange. 
and I'll go to the next orange and go over the green, the next green, go over the orange, the next orange, go over the green, then green over orange, orange over green, and green over orange. And that's all there is to it. Now for the left side, we're going to do the exact opposite. So we're going to start on the bottom section of the orange and let's go orange over green and then green over orange, orange over green, green over orange, orange over green, green over orange, orange over what used to be green and green over orange. And now that the over under effects are complete, we have a perfect interlocking design. I'll get the selection tool, keyboard shortcut V and select all of the design and I'm going to change the color back to our green. So I'll come over to the properties panel, click on the fill color and here's our green CMYK 50-0-100-0. Now I'll click on the artboard to close this out. Well, now that we've created this interlocking medallion, I want to show you how you can use it to create a beautiful swatch. First, I'm going to resize it because it's really quite large as it is. So I'll select all of the objects and I'm going to group them, keyboard shortcut, command G, and then I'll move up to object, transform, and I'm going to come down to scale. Well, I want a uniform scale and I do want to scale the strokes and effects. So, and I'm going to just scroll with my mouse and let's come down to about 35% and then I'll say OK. Next, I'm going to get the swatches panel. I'll come up to window, down to swatches and I'll grab hold of the little tab with my mouse, click down and drag it and dock it next to the layers panel on the right side of my artboard. Then I simply grab hold of the design, drag and drop it into the swatches panel and we have our swatch created. Now I'll move this up and out of the way. Then I'll get the ellipse tool, keyboard shortcut L, and I'm going to drag a circle out onto the artboard and we're going to check our swatch. I'll come over and click on the swatch and Illustrator applies it right away to the circle. Now it's lined up perfectly, but I feel like the design is a little big for the circle. So I'm going to come up to object, down to transform, and then scale. And I think a 50% scale might be a good size, but I didn't want to scale the circle itself. So I'm going to have to come down here and uncheck transform objects. All I want to do is transform the pattern. And now the circle's back to the original size, but the pattern is exactly how I want it. And so I'll say, OK. Now there's one other way I can easily change this swatch after I've created it, and that's to rotate the swatch. So I'm going to come back up to Object, down to Transform, and then choose Rotate. I'm going to change this to 45 degrees. Transform Objects is not checked, but Transform Patterns is. So I'm going to say OK. And now the design in my swatch is rotated diagonally, and I like that best of all. Now remember, you can use this over under effect with objects of any size or any shape. You just need to always start out with an even number of objects. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you've learned something about creating interlocking designs and about turning them into swatches. Be sure and subscribe to my channel now and check that notification bell so that you don't miss any of my future tutorials and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. Bye now.